Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Routes Learning Series for Train Simulator. On today's video, we're going to be visiting the Wakayama and Sakurai routes in Japan, which I believe was released last summer. And I'm going to be driving a scenario which comes with the route called One Summer's Afternoon, which is a full run of the line with a total distance of around 34.8 kilometers, which is around 21 to 22 miles. Just before I go through the stop list, I just wanted to mention that of course because I'm not Japanese and I'm not familiar with the area, my pronunciations are likely to be quite off to the real life pronunciations. However, there is an announcement system built in on this route in this scenario, so you will hear the uh, next station name announced in Japanese as I depart away from each stop. So the stations that we're going to be calling at are Kaguyama, Unebi, Kanahashi, Takada, Yamato Shinjo, Gosei, Tamada, Wakigama, Yoshinaguchi, Katauchi, and finally Gojo. The train that I'm going to be driving in this scenario is a 103 series electric multiple unit. The 103 series has been in service since 1964 and was constructed between 1963 and 1984 with a total of 3,447 vehicles produced. Today there's only 274 vehicles in service with the JR West Company and 54 vehicles with the JR Kyushu Company. The maximum speed of each unit is 100 km per hour, which is around 62 miles per hour, and they have a power output of 440 kilowatts per motor car. The electrical system that they run on is the 1500 volt DC overhead system, and they are designed for the track gauge in Japan, which is narrower than most of the rest of the world at 1067 millimeters, which is 3 foot 6 inches, compared to what we call standard gauge, which is used in the UK and most other countries, of 1435 millimeters, or 4 foot 8 and a half inches. The acceleration rate on these units is 2 km an hour per second, with a maximum deceleration rate of 5 km an hour per second. Once in the cab of the train, there's not that much that I need to do to set up ready for departure, but there are a couple of things I'm going to do now. So the first thing is I'm going to uh, move the reversing handle into the forward position with the W key. And the reversing handle is the levy you can see there on the left hand side of the cab. So now that's in the forward position, the next thing I'm going to do is press I to turn on the instrument lights, just so the instruments are illuminated a lot more clearly and we can see what we're doing much better. And now if we look down on the dashboard here you can see two switches, and I now need to click on the one on the left hand side which I've just done, which is the headlight master switch, and you need to click that to be able to switch on the headlights. So now I've done that I'm going to press H once to turn on the tail lights, and then press H a second time to turn on the headlights. Uh, one thing to note about this scenario is that as we are doing a full run of the route, there's actually a couple of reversals that I'm going to need to do. So at that point I'm going to need to shut down this cab and then move to the other end of the train and set up the cab at the other end of the train. And then again I'm going to have to move back to this cab at one point as well. In fact I think there might be three reversals all in all. So now that I've done that, let's just have a quick look at some of the controls here. If we look down to the floor, you can see a pedal there on the left hand side. And that's actually the horn pedal. Of course you control the horn with the spacebar key, so I won't need to be clicking on that pedal thankfully. And now if we just look at a few more of the controls here. On the left hand side you can see the throttle control, which in this unit is a four step throttle. And then above that we've got the speedometer measured in kilometers per hour. And then we've got some of the brake gauges. Now the main gauge I'm going to use is the gauge that you can see there on the right of the clock in the middle of the dashboard. And if you look at the red needle, I believe that that is the brake cylinder pressure gauge. And so if I release the brakes now, you'll see that the black needle climbs and the red needle falls. And now as I start to apply the brakes, you'll see the red needle start climbing again. So the higher the red needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. There is actually an 8 step brake in this unit and when the red needle is pointing at the 200 as you can see there we are in step 5 of braking and I shouldn't really need to go above that setting in this unit as the brakes are actually very good indeed and I should be able to stop quite easily using between steps 3 and 5 of braking. 
And now if we move over to the right hand side, you can see the brake handle there, which of course I control with the semicolon and the apostrophe keys. And so as I've already mentioned, there is an eight step brake. And I'm going to try and not go above step five. Certainly if you were braking in step seven or eight, then the braking would be very hard. And I'm just not sure it would be that comfortable for the passengers. One other thing to point out is that when slowing for stops on this route, the stop markers are very precise indeed. And I actually find it very difficult to stop in exactly the right place. So you're probably going to see me slightly undershoot or overshoot the stop markers by a few feet, sometimes up to half a carriage in fact. I'm going to do my best to try and stop in just about the uh, right place. So now that we've had a quick look around the cab, there's one final thing to mention which is the, um, I think it's the ATS system which is the signalling system. I'm not quite sure exactly how it works on this unit. I do know that when I hear an alarm at a signal I need to press the Q key to reset it but then there is an in-cab alarm which sometimes sounds up until I've stopped the train which you can't reset so I'm not sure whether that would happen in reality or if I'm doing something slightly wrong but for all the information I give you in this video it should allow you to be able to drive this train successfully on this route without the HUD. When you're looking at the ATS system here, you can see there's a series of um, six lights there, two of which are currently illuminated. And if you look at the light which has the P written on it, and you then move to the one to the right of that, if that light illuminates, that actually means that I'm going slightly over speed. It might be only 0.1 kilometers per hour over the speed limit, but it will tell you that you are speeding. And if you end up going significantly over the speed limit, then this system will kick in to slow you down and get you back down below the uh, speed limit. So now we've had a look around the cab, let's just have a quick look back outside at the train and then we can depart and head out on our journey. Departing away from Sakurai, the starting speed limit is 35 kilometers per hour or just over 20 miles per hour, and we've got around 1.9 kilometers to go to our first stop, which is Kagoyama. As you can see there, I've just ended up probably at around 35.2 or 3 kilometers per hour. So the ATS system uh, light just came on for a moment there. The speed limit here is now going up to 80 kilometers per hour. I can accelerate at this second overhead gantry just here. Along here I'm now looking out for two underbridges at the second underbridge. We've then got 0.8 kilometers to go, which is around half a mile to our next stop. We're just crossing the first underbridge now and the second one is coming up in a moment. You can just see the walls to the side of it there. And now we've reached 80 kilometers per hour. I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast and I won't need any more power now between here and our stop. On this left hand curve just coming up and then looking out for a level crossing and at that level crossing I'm then going to apply the brakes up to around step 3 initially and then increasing as required as we get closer to our stopping point. So I'm now in a step 3 brake application and I'm bringing the speed off quite nicely. Just as we reach the end of this left hand curve you should see the platform coming up on the right hand side, in fact you can just see it coming up now. Here at Kaguyama I need to stop at the forecast sign which is just a little bit before the end of the platform. I've just reduced the brakes for a moment as we were going to stop slightly too early. You just see that white post now coming up on the left hand side which marks the four car stopping point. And so if we stop just here we should now be stopped in just about the right place.
次はうねびうねびです Departing away from Kaguyama, the starting speed limit is 80 km per hour, and we've got just under 3 km to go to our next stop, which is Unebi. As we get to 80 km per hour, I'm then going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. And now we shouldn't need any more power between here and our next stop. So, as we coast along here for a moment, I just wanted to mention something of the upcoming videos on this channel. So, recently I started working on a full run of the Marias Pass, which I'm hoping will be my next American route learning video coming within the next few weeks. It's going to be a lot of effort because it's a long journey. In fact, it takes over three hours to drive. And if I make mistakes, then I've got to jump back an awful long way to、uh, start the recording again and rectify them.、Um, it will probably be, I would say, the biggest video project. I've done so far, with an awful lot to learn and remember. But I'm quite looking forward to the challenge of driving the route. A couple more videos that are coming up. One will be a run on the Riviera Line. In fact, my second ever video was a run on the Riviera Line, but this time with the new Armstrong Powerhouse for Lenta Enhancement Pack for the HST. So I really wanted to demonstrate the new features of that, and in addition to that, I just thought it would be great to remake that video in 60 frames a second, as I believe that that route can actually handle it. Just to say here, we're now going up on a 2.8% gradient. I'm just allowing the train to slow down for a moment, and then just as we reach the top here, I'm now going to start applying the brakes for an upcoming speed drop. The speed limit is firstly falling to 45 km per hour on the next point coming up just ahead. And then immediately after that, it's falling to 35 km per hour. Although the 35 km per hour speed limit is not posted on the HUD, so you wouldn't actually know that it's dropping to that. In fact, I learned this by trial and error that the speed limit drops to 35 just here. So I've now just released the brakes momentarily. I'm going to reapply them again as I enter the platform and then look out for the four car stopping point. So, as mentioned, I'm doing the Marias Pass and the Riviera Line, and I'm also looking to do the Swiss route learning video very shortly on the Glacier Express, as that's in a backlog of routes that I have learned but I'm yet to actually record. The four car stop sign is just coming up on the right hand side there. I'm now trying to bring us in gently to stop in the right place. And so we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Kanahashi, Kanahashi this. Departing away from Unebi, the starting speed limit is 35 km per hour, and we've got around 2.5 km to go to our next stop, which is Kanahasi. I'm now just idling the power for a moment as we reach 35 km per hour. The speed limit has just gone back up to 80, and I can accelerate just there at that second overhead gantry. So I'm now going to bring us up to 80 km per hour, and then I'm going to idle the power, and I should just be able to allow the train to coast between there and our next stop.
One other thing to mention about the Marias Pass video while it's on my mind, I have asked everyone who's following me on Facebook as well, but as it's such a long video I thought it would be helpful to do a bit of a question and answer session in there, so I'm going to address some of the frequently asked questions on this channel, and also answer any specific questions which may be asked, so if you've got any questions that you would like me to answer in that video, then please leave them in the comments here so I can compile a list of questions to cover uh, when it comes to doing the recording session. So I've now idled the power, I'm allowing the train to coast at 80 km per hour. At the end of the left curve that we just passed around, we had 1.5 km to go to our stop. We've now got uh, this light right curve here before a climb that's coming up just ahead. Once we reach the climb, we've then got 0.8 km or half a mile to go to Kanahasi Station. I'm going to allow the train to coast up this hill, which will allow us to lose a bit more speed. And then just after this climb, there's going to be a 1.1% grade in a downwards direction. So we're going to be going on a 1.1% downgrade. And I'm aiming to apply the brakes for our stop on this light right-hand curve, which is coming up in a moment. So I'm now in a step three brake application. I believe I can see the platform coming up just ahead. So I'm aiming to enter the platform at no faster than around 30 kilometers per hour, which I think is the best speed on this route to be entering platforms at. So I just increased the braking momentarily. In fact, I'm just fanning between steps three and five. One of the things to point out with this unit is that actually the braking um, system is very sensitive. I think it's just the keyboard controls here. But it's very easy to apply the brakes harder than you originally intended it intended to, should I say. So you can see the four car stop sign just coming up on the left here. So if I stop just before that, we should be stopped in about the right place. Departing away from Kanahasi, the starting speed limit is 80 km per hour, and we've got around 2.4 km to go to the next stop, which is Takada. Once again, as we reach 80 km per hour, I'm then going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. So we've just reached 80 now, and the power handle is now in the neutral or idle position. I shouldn't need any more power now between here and our stop at Takada. What I'm looking out for now is the next signal, as there is an upcoming 30 km per hour speed restriction shortly after that signal. And so I'm going to apply the brakes as we approach the next signal coming up. And the speed limit comes into force actually on a point a little bit before where it's marked on the HUD. So where you see the speed limit marked on the HUD, it will actually drop before that point. Now we're just coming up on the signal now. And I've made an initial step three brake application and I will increase further as we get closer to the point if required. In fact, I'm now going up to step four and five, as I'm not quite sure we're going to slow down quick enough. There is actually a 50 km per hour speed limit which comes into force a little bit before the 30. And so the um, ATS system just sounded an alarm which I've now reset. However, as you can hear, there is still another alarm going off in the cab, and I now won't actually be able to um, reset this alarm until I brought the train to a stop in the platform at Takada. So I brought the speed, speed uh, down to 30 km per hour there, but I think I might have entered that system around, sorry, that section should I say, at around 31 km per hour, as the ATS system did come up with the light just for a split second before I was down to 30. So here at Takada is one of the stations I need to do a reversal. I am going to cut out the cab um, shutdown and setup procedure just to speed up this video slightly.
can now see the forecast stopping point just coming up with the post there on the left hand side. And so we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing Takada, the starting speed limit is 35 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 3.6 kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Yamato Shinjo. Now that we're reaching 35 kilometers per hour, I'm just shutting off the power here to allow the train to coast. And then very shortly, the speed limit is going to be going up to 45 kilometers per hour. Although the post here says 35, it's actually 45. And I can accelerate at the third overhead gantry just here. So just passing the first, here's the second, and then finally you can see the third here just on the left hand side. So I'm now going to bring our speed up towards 45 kilometers per hour. According to the ATS system, I'm going slightly over the speed limit there, although according to the speedometer, I hadn't actually quite uh, reached 45 at the time, so it seems that the speedometer there might be slightly under-reading the speed. So at this point it starts raining on the journey, and in fact one of the reasons I picked this particular scenario is because there's actually a thunderstorm now brewing and the rain's going to get quite heavy, and I'd just like to see the different rain effects here. Speed limit is now going up to 80 kilometers per hour and I'm going to accelerate just before this crossing just coming up. At this point we've now got around 2.1 kilometers to go to our next stop. And once again as we reach 80 kilometers per hour I'm then going to idle the power to allow the train to coast. We're now doing 80 kilometers per hour and at this point I've just shut off the power and we shouldn't need any more power between here and Yamato Shinjo, at our ne which is our next stop. On the next climb you can see coming up in the distance there which is a climb of 1.5%. We've then got 0.8 kilometers to go to our stop. So on that climb I'm going to allow the train to start losing some speed and then I'm going to apply the brakes as we approach the platform of our station. So the train is now coasting down in speed and I'm just going to apply some light braking just here just to bring our speed down a bit more. I'm not sure exactly where the platform is coming up, I just know that we are now getting very close to it. And so I wanted to apply the brakes on this climb a little. I'm now releasing the brakes as we were slowing down slightly too early. Um, I found it difficult to find an exact landmark for a braking point. I can now see the platform coming up however, so I'm now applying the brakes a bit more. I'm just going to fan the brakes a little to try and bring us to a more precise stop. Of course I'm aiming to stop by the four-car stop sign. And here at these platforms on this section of the route we now actually have door markers which are almost impossible to stop by I find, um, which show you the exact stopping points um, of the unit with each marker pointing to a specific door on the train. You can now see the four-car stop marker just coming up on the left-hand side.
and so we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from Yamato Shinjo, the starting speed limit is 80 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 2.5 kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Gose. At the end of this left curve that we're currently on, we've then got around 2 kilometers to go to our stop. And at this point we are on a climb, which means I am going to need to go between notches 1 and 2 of power to try and maintain the speed as close to 80 kilometers per hour as possible. So I've just reduced the power down to notch 2 for a moment, and the speed is slowly creeping up towards 80. And then once we reach 80, I will reduce the power to notch 1. So I've just reduced the power now down to notch one. And we should start losing just a little bit of speed here. I know the gradient does level out along here. In fact, I believe it has now leveled out as our speed was still increasing. So I've just now idled the power to allow the train to coast and shouldn't need any further power between here and our stop. What I'm looking out for along here now is the next signal. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop as we approach the next signal, which I can see now just coming up on the left hand side. like I was braking slightly too early there, slowing down just slightly too much, but I can now see the platform coming up. Of course, I'm aiming to enter at no faster than around 30 kilometers per hour. So I've now just released the brakes completely for a moment until we get closer to the platform itself. And then of course, I'm looking out for the four car stop sign, which is the correct stopping point here. And I'm gonna try and stop again as close to the door markers as possible, which at the last stop, I must say, was actually the best attempt I've ever made at stopping uh, by the correct door markers. So the two car stop sign is now coming up on the right hand side and as you can see there's a second white post just after that which is the four car stop sign. And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Gose, the starting speed limit is immediately down to 45 kilometers per hour. And at this point, we've got around two kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Tamade. As we're now reaching 45 kilometers per hour, I'm just going to shut off the power here to allow the train to coast. As you probably saw there, I ended up speeding just for a brief moment, once again just due to the fact that the speedometer is slightly under reading the speed. I'm now just going to go between idle and notch 1 to try and maintain the speed as close to 45 kilometers per hour as possible. As you can see here, the uh, storm's actually getting very bad indeed, and it's certainly impeding my visibility, so I'm trying to see as clearly as I can.
We are going downhill slightly here, which was increasing our speed, hence uh, the um, ATS light kept coming on for a moment. The speed limit's just gone up to 60 kilometers per hour, and I can start accelerating just at the second gantry here. So now going to bring up our speed towards 60, and then idle the power at just below 60 kilometers per hour, so I should idle the power at this point. I'm now looking out for the platform at Tamade Station, which should be coming up on the right-hand side uh, very shortly. can now see the platform just coming up, so I'm now starting to apply the brakes and bring our speed down. Trying to drive with a bit more caution here due to the considerably lowered visibility. I'm entering the platform a bit too quick, so I've just made a, a much harder than usual brake application up to notch 5, just to try and ensure that I bring the speed down in time. And I can just see the forecast stop sign coming up on the left hand side here. Just probably overshot that sign very slightly, but we should be stopped in roughly the right place. Parting away from Tamada, the starting speed limit is 60 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 1.5 kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Wakigan. Now that we're reaching 60 kilometers per hour, I'm idling the power just a little bit before we reach 60, as there is a down 0.8% grade coming up. I just want to ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit on that downgrade, and so I'm going to use the brakes as required to try and maintain the speed and just keep an eye on that speed, which is actually currently dropping for a moment, though it should be going up very shortly. The braking point for Wakigami Station is just after the next signal. Now just applying a little bit of braking as our speed was coming up above 60 km per hour. We've just reached the next signal here, which is currently displaying a yellow aspect. And I'm now applying the brakes to bring our speed down for the stop, which is just coming up. The speed limit has also now just gone up to 80 km per hour just before we reached the stop here. You just see the platform there on the left-hand side. So again, trying to bring the speed down to 30 km per hour for entering the platform and then aiming to stop at the forecast stop. Now just trying to see the uh, stopping posts on the right hand side there. I believe it's the second one actually, the first one just here I think is a two car stopping point. Nope, that was actually the four. So I have just made a slight mistake there and overshot it. Now again, unfortunately due to poor visibility. So we stopped just slightly beyond the right place. Departing away from Wakigami, the starting speed limit is 80 kilometers per hour and we've got around four kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Yosinaguchi.
as we've now reached 80 kilometers per hour. I've just idled the power for a moment and I see that we are actually on a climb. I knew there was a climb coming up along here, which is as steep as 2.4%. And so I've just applied power just to gain for a moment, although the gradient is now leveling out just here as I've just seen. So now that we're getting back up to 80, I'm now going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast the here. So what I'm looking out for now is a crossing and then a sharp right curve. At that point, we've got around two kilometers to go to our stop. So here's the crossing with the sharp right curve. We've now got around two kilometers to go. And just after this curve, we're going to be starting on a 1.6% grade uh, on a climb. So I am going to need to go between steps two and three of power to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed. What I'm looking out for along here as a landmark now is the next signal. I'm going to idle the power as I see the signal and then I'm going to brake for the stop just as we are passing the signal. lost a little bit too much speed there and I'm just applying full power now to bring our speed back up towards 80 kilometers per hour. I can now see the next signal coming up so at this point I'm now idling the power to allow the train to coast. And then I'm preparing to apply the brakes as we are passing the signal, ready for our stop at Yoshinoguchi. And then, of course, I'm aiming to stop at the forecast stop sign, and hopefully I'll do a slightly better job of that than I did when stopping at the previous station. So I've now got the brakes on. I'm bringing our speed down quite nicely. You can now see the platforms coming up just ahead. So I'm increasing the braking because uh, step three brake application that I was in wasn't quite enough. So I've now made a step five brake application, which has brought our speed down nicely to 30 kilometers per hour in time for the platform here. Now I'm going to try and gently bring us to a stop in the correct position. releasing the brakes momentarily and it looks like that, that is the forecast stop sign just coming up on the right hand side. I wanted to be sure of that that I wasn't mistaking it this time and thinking that it was a two car stop sign instead. So if we stop here we should be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from Yosunaguchi, the starting speed limit is very shortly down to 60 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 6.7 kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Kitauchi. So the speed limit here has now dropped to 60 kilometers per hour and I'm just reducing the power here just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. There is actually a climb here of upwards of 1.3% so we do have to be careful not to lose too much speed. So I'm going to try and stay in a low power setting to maintain the speed as close to 60 kilometers per hour as possible. Though the gradient should be leveling out on the next left hand curve just here at which point I can then idle the power to allow the train to coast. The speed is now coming up towards 60, the gradient has leveled out and I've just idled the power for a moment. 
and then after the next left hand curve the gradient is going to be as steep as 2.6 percent which means that i am going to need between setting or should i say notches two and three of power to try and maintain the speed that we have now started the climb as our speed is starting to fall off so I'm just going to increase the power here for a moment and just after this next right hand curve here we've then got five kilometers to go to Kitauchi. This next underbridge just coming up here, you should be able to see that in a moment. The gradient is then shallowing to 1.8%. So I'm now just going to reduce the power. I just idled it when I didn't intend to. And I need to go down to around notch two of power to maintain the speed close to 60 kilometers per hour. And then the gradient is going to continue to shallow further as we come around this curve here. I believe it's at the next level crossing. We've then got around 3.6 kilometers to go. It is around two and a quarter miles. The gradient here is continuing to shallow as I've now reduced the power further. And we're now not losing speed like we were before. So I should be able to maintain the speed pretty much around 60 along here with uh, between uh, idle and notch one of power for now. So we've now reached the crossing which I mentioned a moment ago. I believe we've now got around 3.6 kilometers to go to our stop. And at the next crossing we approach, we've then got around 2.8 kilometers to go. And just after that crossing, there is then an, a 1.6% upward grade, which will require an increase in the power once again to maintain the speed. So we're now past the crossing with 2.8 kilometers to go. And now we're about to start on the up 1.6% grade again. So I'm just increasing the power to try and maintain this uh, as close to 60 kilometers per hour as possible. This gradient's actually going to steepen further to between 2.5 uh, and 2.9%. I've just gone up to full power for a moment just to bring our speed back up towards 60 and I'm now down to notch three and notch two once again. I just need to keep an eye on the gradients along here. After the steep 2.9% climb, the gradient will then level out. And then shortly after leveling out, we're then going to have a 2% downward gradient, which means I'm going to need to use the brakes to control the speed. Now see the gradient change coming up just along here as the gradient steepens to 2.9%. So I am now increasing the power further. We are presently in full power and we're not accelerating much towards 60 kilometers per hour. And I've now just gone down to notch three of power. And on this grade, I believe in notch three, we might actually lose just a little bit of speed. The gradient is now leveling out and very shortly we're going to be on the down 2% grade. So at this point I'm just going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. 
um, providing we don't lose too much speed then I shouldn't need to add any power at this point. What I'm looking out for along here is the next signal. As we approach that signal I then need to start thinking about braking for an upcoming 35 km per hour speed limit which comes into force just after the signal. I believe we are now on the downward grade as we are in idle and the speed was increasing slightly. So I've just made a minimal brake application just to bring our speed down towards 55. Now see if as I release the brakes the speed is increasing again. So I'm just going to have to use the brakes now along this section to control our speed. You can now see the next signal coming up I believe with the green and red light there. So I am now applying the braking, in fact I applied the brakes a bit too hard there. I didn't quite intend on applying them as hard as that. I'm just saying I'm applying the braking now for the upcoming 35 km per hour speed restriction which I believe comes into force at this speed post just on the right hand side here. Here at Kitauchi is where I need to do the next reversal. In fact what I'm going to have to do is I go into the platform here and then have to change ends and then as we depart I'm going to drive into a reversing siding then I'm going to need to change ends once again to go back to the other end of the train to complete our journey into Gojo. I'm just fanning the brakes here to bring our speed down. I see that it has now stopped raining, so I'm going to turn off the wipers at this point. I believe that's the forecast stop sign just coming up on the left hand side. And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing Katalchi, the starting speed limit is 35 km per hour, and we've got just under 5 km to go to our next stop, which is Gojo. I'm now bringing our speed up towards 25 km per hour and then as we reach 25 I'm now going to idle the power and just allow the train to coast it. And we're now entering the reversing siding as we cross over and I'm aiming to stop around 3 to 4 gantries into the siding. It should be just about, about the right place for changing ends and then reversing back out the siding once again. And so we should now be stopped in about the right place in the siding, so I'm now just going to set up the cab at the other end of the train and then prepare for departure out towards Gojo, which is of course our next and final stop. So I have now changed ends once again, I'm now releasing the brakes and departing away from the reversing siding here at Katalchi. The starting speed limit is still 35 km per hour, and so I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast once we reach 35. The speed limit here is now going up to 60 km per hour and I can accelerate around the area of the second overhead gantry just here. As we get towards 50 km per hour I'm now going to idle the power and allow the train to coast due to the fact that we are currently on a downward gradient so the train can now coast up towards 60. I'm going to use the brakes if necessary to control the speed here. The gradient should be levelling out shortly, in fact I believe it might have actually already levelled out so I'm now just going to increase the power slightly to bring us back up towards 60 km per hour. There is a new downward gradient starting shortly which will be down at 2.5% and then at that point I need to use the brakes to control the speed on the descent. I 
I believe we are now back on the downward gradient as our speed was going up towards 60 and the ATS system light just came on for a moment so I'm just braking us down to 55 and I'm now fully releasing the brakes to allow the train to coast up towards 60 once again. I'm now using minimal brake applications to try and control our speed. I just tried a step one brake application and it seems that that wasn't quite enough to do the job. So I'm now in a step two brake application to see if that will help us to maintain the 60 km per hour speed limit. needing slightly more braking there as the ATS system came, light came on once again and as it did again just there. Keep applying the brakes a bit harder than I intend to along here unfortunately due to as I've already mentioned before the over sensitivity of the keyboard commands to um, my inputs so when I try and just simply tap it once or twice to put it in a light brake setting it often jumps up to like uh, steps four or five braking and I'm actually only intending to put it into steps one or two braking. So at some point along here now, the gradient will shallow and then I can reduce the braking. And what I'm looking out for is the next signal along this section. At the next signal, we've then got around 0.5 kilometers to go to our stop. The gradient has now shallowed as I'm now using minimal brake applications and it is controlling our speed. Looks like the speed is still increasing slightly, but only very slightly when the brakes are fully released. So as mentioned, the next signal is 0.5 kilometers to our stop. It's also 0.25 kilometers to an upcoming 35 kilometer per hour speed limit. So I'm going to apply the brakes at that signal to slow down to 35 kilometers per hour. At this point I'm just allowing the train to coast along here as the gradient has now shallowed. I shouldn't need to add any more power or use the brakes until we reach our uh, braking point for the upcoming speed restriction. But you can now see the next signal coming up just ahead. So I'm going to start applying the brakes just here just as we pass this signal for the upcoming 35 km per hour speed restriction. Just reset the ATS alarm there and now of course we've got the in-cab alarm which will now be sounding until I stop the train. Speed limit is now down to 35 kilometers per hour. And you can now see Gojo station is just coming up. now going to add braking just a bit more to bring our speed down as we come towards the platform here. I'm going to aim to enter this platform a bit slower than usual as it's the end of the line and so I'm aiming to enter around 20 kilometers per hour as we just did. And now I'm just looking out for the four car stop sign which should be coming up very shortly. I'm not sure if it's this first one on the right hand side or not so I want to be going slow enough that I can stop at it if it is the first one. In fact it looks like it is, yes. I can now see that that is a number four. And so if we stop by this sign just on the right here, then we should be stopped in just about the right place. And so here we are, arrival at Gojo. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the video, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook. And the link to the PTG Rail Facebook page is in the description of this video. Also, if you would like to sponsor anything towards the work that I do, then please visit my Patreon page for more information. And the link to my Patreon page is also in the description of this video. Once again, thank you for watching.